Hello there. Today I'm taking a look at a white burgundy. This is from Chateau Morache and from the producer is Philippe Collin. This is a village level Chateau Morache and it's from the 2020 vintage. So Philippe Collin began his career as a winemaker in 1988 when he joined his family's domain, Domaine Collin d'Elanger domain that had been started by his grandparents. His parents Bernadette and Michel were working there at the time and in 1995 he was joined there by his brother. So when he started in 1988 he had just finished his training as a viticulturist and an enologist. Today he has his own domain which consists of five hectares of vines. Evidently when his parents retired in 2003 they split the domain between the two brothers Philippe and Bruno so each each brother got nine hectares. Philippe founded his domain in 2004 and built that up to 12 hectares but in 2021 he chose to pass off seven of those hectares to his son Simon to manage and for him to make the wine there. And the additional time that giving up those seven hectares of vineyards gave Philippe has enabled him to establish a brand in South Africa, Topery, which he runs in Franschhoek. And he can do that, of course, because in South Africa and the, the other hemisphere, their harvest is in February at a time when it's very quiet in Burgundy. And with just five hectares, it, that's a manageable operation in that situation. The approach employed in the vineyards is one called the lute raisonné, and the lute raisonné is normally translated as the rational struggle. So it's not actually being organic, it's just being careful about the, the use of chemicals in the vineyard. So pesticides and fungicides are only used in conjunction with careful monitoring to see where there are problems. And if a problem occurs, hopefully you can catch that early and you only have to treat the portion of the vineyard that's affected, rather than the traditional approach to spraying, which unfortunately is a lot more preventative going through the vineyard and spraying several times, simply just in case these problems occur. Now this particular wine comes from four, what are described as Ludi, so individually named vineyards and the four of them are combined, which is, is why it doesn't bear a single vineyard name. So presumably, presumably fairly small holdings in each vineyard. And these village level vineyards are on the lower slopes of the hill, below the Premier Cruise and run down into Chassin itself. So the four Ludis used are Voileneau de Sou, Concy des Champs, Les Charrières and Fontaine Slow. Now this, they say the, the age of the vines here is 35 years plus. So you can expect those to be fully mature vines and vines that will restrict the yield that they produce and so give lovely concentrated fruit. Picking here is done entirely by hand and Philippe likes to make sure that there's no overripeness here. He, he loves the sort of tension, the nervosity that fruit has when it still retains good acidity. The fruit is pressed gently and slowly with a pneumatic press and the juice is put into stainless steel tanks where fermentation is allowed to start with the ambient yeasts, the yeasts that are already in the winery and the yeasts that have come in on the fruit from the vineyards. The fermenting must is run into oak where it will finish its fermentation and complete its malolactic conversion. I don't know what proportion of that oak is new. It will be French oak, it'll be tight grained French oak, it's medium toasted. They work with five different coopers to make sure that they can find exactly the style of barrels that they're looking for. And there may be a small proportion of new oak, but probably not very much. In fact, the domain has actually been pulling back the amount of oak that it uses in its wines. In 2020, they were still using a certain amount of, of 228 litre barriques. However, by 2021, they decided to move entirely to 500 litre oak casks, so reducing the oak influence substantially. The wine stays in barrel for 12 months, it's there with its fine lees, and those lees are stirred up occasionally to help give richness to the wine as it ages. The wine is lightly filtered before bottling and then is bottled using gravity. So let's have a look at the wine, shall we? There's a medium intensity of colour, it's relatively deep. The wine has 13% alcohol, it's not particularly throwing tears on the glass. Eventually it produces a few, but not, not really. So let's see what we make of the aromas, shall we? The nose starts with some lovely, open, peachy fruit. 
It's quite gentle, quite restrained. There are delicate notes of blossom across the top of that. And then you've got a sort of a slightly gunpowdery, gunflinty note, maybe slightly toastiness. But I think that's coming from the, the indigenous fermentation that's going on there. There's not particularly a note of oak. There may be a little underlying vanilla and a touch of cedar, but that, that is nicely integrated with the creaminess that's come from the lees aging. But all of those elements are quite delicate there, sitting behind pleasant and quite restrained peachy fruit. So let's have a taste, shall we? On the palate, the wine has a medium weight and the peachy notes really do open up in the mouth there. There's a lovely rounded richness to the, to the really quite ripe fruit. There's a citric freshness at first and then you get a cleaner, more assertive minerally note sort of starting to come through there. The roundness of the fruit is assisted by a, a very well integrated creamy note coming from that batonnage that has gone on the least stirring. There are slight saline hints along with the toastiness. I think the toastiness is partially derived, as, as I was saying earlier, from the indigenous fermentation, but I think also it's a little of it maybe coming from a tiny touch of new oak in there. Because it does feel as if there's a, a little bit of vanilla there. I don't even know that there's new oak in this, but it, it, it seems like it's possible that there's a little. There's some lovely, rich, peachy fruit that's actually uh, dominating the finish. The, the, the acidity isn't quite coming through to give a, a to give the focus I'd, I'd, I'd really like to the finish there. There are the creamy touches, there are citric lemony notes, and there's a reasonable length. The finish is more rounded and rich and it has a soft texture to it. The wine is lovely to drink now. I'm not sure that I would keep it for more than three or four years. I don't think it quite has quite the acidic nervosity that I would want from a wine if I was going to keep it for the long term. Nonetheless, offering some really lovely drinking now. And I think that is reflected. Its wine searcher average score is at 90. I think that's a pretty good score for a wine of this sort. It's well made. It's got complexity. I don't think it has the ability to age, but it's drinking beautifully now. So thank you very much for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed the tasting. If you have, do please press the like button. If you'd like to watch more of the tastings, it'd be fantastic if you would subscribe to our channel. That way you can set yourself a, a, an alert and be notified every time that we publish a new taste. If you have any comments you'd like to leave, please pop those in the comments box below. We'd very much appreciate your feedback. We'd love to know what you think about the wines we're talking about, the tastings we're doing, or anything else that relates to that. If you have friends you think might like to watch the video, do please pass it on to them. We, we do appreciate that kind of endorsement from you. I will leave a link in the comments box below so that you can follow that to the Wine Searcher webpage for this vintage of this wine. And there, there, there will be some more production information. We have what scores we have from the critics showing there, any awards it's won, its price history. You can look at information on the region it's from, the grape variety. You can see the producer background. And from that, you can see other wines that the producer makes. So hopefully all the information you'd possibly want about this wine. So thank you so much once again for watching. And I do hope you'll come and join us for another tasting in the very near future. Bye for now.